Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Bisher. I'm a dermatologist and Mohs micrographic surgeon, and I have my awesome guest with me today. I'm Bria Barjuka, I'm a nurse practitioner in dermatology. Today's topic is basal cell carcinoma treatments that are non-surgical. So we know basal cell carcinoma is the most common type of skin cancer. Mm -hmm. Skin cancer itself is the most common type of cancer in the US. Mm -hmm. In basal cell carcinoma, we have about 5.5 million cases every year. Thankfully, it's locally destructive, but it is not metastatic, meaning that it can continue to grow in the local environment. It can get deep, it can cause an ulcer, mm -hmm. it can go even down the nerves, and in some very few cases, it can metastasize, meaning go to other parts of your body. Nevertheless, it is a skin cancer. Do you see a lot of basal cell carcinoma in your clinic? All the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's very, very common. Many times we treat it surgically, meaning we cut it out, we stitch, we do something called Mohs micrographic surgery, which is my specialty, where we remove it and we test the pathology in the office in the same appointment, and we do the reconstruction after that, all in one appointment. However, surgery is not the best route for everyone, mm -hmm. and surgery is not what everyone wants. So a lot of times people ask you, right? Mm -hmm. I want a non-surgical treatment. Right, people ask you know, if it's on their face and it's a female, for instance. What else can I do? I don't want a big scar on my face. Yeah, and not just females, males are also vain, they, just to FYI. Well, yes, <clears throat> so let's not generalize here. Yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> but, and it's not only on the face that people don't want surgery, sometimes it's the chest. Mm -hmm. yeah. the chest does not heal very nicely. Mm -hmm. It heals poorly a lot of times. It can keloid, mm -hmm. um, legs also heal, heal very, very poorly. Mm -hmm. And also to older, the older population, <clears throat> a lot of times doesn't want to deal with the surgical aspects, the before and afters and the possible complications that can come with it. So what other options do we have? I'm gonna start with actually a surgical but less invasive option. It's called electrodesiccation and curatage. So a curette is like a spoon-like instrument with very sharp edges and instead of actually cutting the cancer out, removing it and stitching, we scrape. We colloquially call this a scrape and burn procedure. Right. We scrape the cancer off because again, it's superficial, remember? So we are just scraping it off and then we're desiccating, meaning we're sending electrical current into the skin to stop bleeding and further destroy the cancer cells. I like to do it three times in one sitting. And after that, you have kind of like a, a, a kind of like a road rash type lesion on your skin where right. if you've ever scraped your knee or fell and had, got, had road rash, you get that and then that heals without any stitches. The care's a little bit easier. It's easier and you don't have stitches, so your activity restrictions, the big, big thing is activity restrictions. Right. You don't have to wait like a week or two weeks before you resume your activities because you're not gonna rip any stitches out. There are no stitches to, to remove. It is still considered a surgical treatment though mm -hmm. and you still have a wound that you have to take care of. So if you said, well, I don't even want that, give me my other options. So the first options are the topical creams. Now we have to preface this with all of these topicals. You can only treat the superficial kind of basal cell carcinomas. Correct. You can't do the invasive or the infiltrative or the ones that are aggressive Correct. because the topical medication can only penetrate so far into the skin, mm -hmm. can't get too deep. So the first one is a chemotherapy cream called 5 fluorouracil the brand name that's very well known is Effidex. Mm -hmm. It's a 5% chemotherapy agent, and it actually was discovered that this treats precancers and cancers when it was given IV to people. And um, it's an anti-metabolite, meaning that it stops rapidly dividing cells from reproducing, from dividing. So that will inhibit the cancer cells. So after people discovered that through IV, it's treating the precancers, they were like, all right, so why don't we actually make it into a topical medication? So how good is that though? What's the percent, would you say, in So your about 70 to 80% mm -hmm. effective uh, if you use it for a certain duration of time. I typically like to use it for six weeks at least, mm -hmm. and you use it? I use it for a month to six weeks, okay. um, typically, depending on the depth of the skin cancer. How do you tell them to apply it? A thin layer twice a day. Yep. Yeah, usually, so I say, 
wear a glove or use a Q-tip to apply it. Mm -hmm. Let's say the skin cancer is, you know, on your forearm. You're going to you're going to do that cuz you don't want to like spread it anywhere else. Definitely don't like rub your eyes when you have it. So you got to wash your hands if you're touching it. Um, and make sure it doesn't spread anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It causes irritation, burning, um, kind of redness of the skin. Uh, has some negative side effects. So, you know, you could get blistering or open Absolutely. sores to the area. I typically tell my patients if they're at that point, you know, it's time to stop because it's a little bit too strong. Uh, that typically happens when patients apply it too thick or go out in the sun because it does photosensitize that area. Um, in mm -hmm. regards to this treatment though, I think it's a good option for people who are really conscious of scarring because typically it doesn't leave a scar in that area. Mm -hmm. Anything can leave a scar, but typically it doesn't. Also, you might get some systemic absorption. So if you start feeling bad, like if you start feeling like nauseous right. or having flu-like symptoms, you need to stop and let your, um, let your dermatology provider know. So that's, that's one. Another one it, that's very popular is called Imiquimod mm -hmm. and Eldera is the brand name. We use it daily and you use it for a period of about six weeks. How it works is that it stimulates your own immune system to fight the skin cancer. The 5 fluorouracil stop the skin cancer from dividing. This one actually boosts your immune system so it like knocks out the skin cancer. With that being said, again, same type of side effects. It can cause flu-like symptoms systemically even though it's topical. It can cause reactivation of, um, of herpes. It can also cause infections and scarring and open wounds. Most of the time it doesn't. It's just some redness in irritation. How effective is it? About the same as uh, the 5 fluorouracil. I would put it in the 70 to 80 percent range mm -hmm. for the superficial ones. Again, don't use it for deep tumors. So those are the topical treatments. And there's a cryosurgery. Even though mm -hmm. it's called cryosurgery, we're not really using a, a blade. We use liquid nitrogen and we spray the lesion for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. um, so f with that being said, it does destruct the skin. It goes you know, to a certain layer of the skin depending on the time that you use the liquid nitrogen. Um, so with that being said, it does create an open wound, usually a blister open wound, and then you have to take care of it just as you would, like say the E, D, and C that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. But again, taking care of that is a lot easier for some people than taking care of a surgical incision. So, mm -hmm. and the activity restriction, there pretty much is none other than getting in like dirty water, which we don't advise. Yeah, to. yeah. Not a very high uh, treatment rate. What would you put this one at? Meaning uh, about 80%, 80%. Yeah, so that's cryosurgical destruction. We move from cryosurgical destruction to another modality that is superficial radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. Now this is x-ray radiation that's only aimed at the superficial layers of the skin and over time it will destroy the skin cancer cells and it will destroy some normal cells too but the normal cells can regenerate, the skin cancer cells can't. So we usually take the dose and we fractionate it meaning we give it over time in tiny fractions. Anywhere from 12 to 25 treatments depending on the site, the energy, the depth of the tumor, depending on many factors. So in the right hands, in the right candidate, superficial radiation therapy is excellent. But in some cases, it can cause ulceration, it can cause uh, dermatitis, meaning inflammation, and it can get infected just like surgery. But again, it has to be the right candidate, maybe an elderly candidate who has a lot of comorbidities and does not want uh, surgery. So. so what's the percentage of effectiveness for that? I'd say around 90%. Okay. And then do you find that you have problems with people following up since there's so many treatments needed? Yeah, it's a commitment from the patient. So they have to commit. So when patients are iffy about it, we don't even do it. Or if they if they live like far away, right, yeah. then obviously that's, we're not going to do radiation. So Another modality that we can sometimes use is uh, the YAG laser 1064. The YAG basically heats the skin using laser energy to destruct the skin cancer. Uh, usually takes about three treatments, about six weeks apart. It can scar, but the scar is typically a lot smaller and it's very localized to the tumor rather than having to take margins and stuff like that. So I do find people really like that, especially on the face or invisible areas, face, hands, you know, mm -hmm. lower legs, that type of stuff. It's very uncommon, but you can get some ulceration. Again, Especially if she doesn't like you, she's going to ulcerate you. <laughs> I, would, I would never do I'm that. Just kidding. But it is yeah, a, it's a good treatment that a lot of people don't know about. So Basically, it's kind of like an e, a controlled EDNC. 
because you're just destroying that layer of skin with the, uh, you're heating it, you're destroying those skin cancer cells. How effective is it in a large population study? We don't exactly know yet, but in the small populations, it shows about 90% but you have to trust the person doing it. They have to be good. Otherwise, there are other modalities that you might wanna consider. Speaking of which, there's also photodynamic therapy, which is blue light combined with a photosensitizing agent that kills the precancerous or cancer cells. It has been used for superficial basal cell carcinomas um, with blue light and red light. However, I don't highly recommend it. It's kind of like a last resort. We've used it a couple times when people have a lot of superficial basal cell carcinomas, maybe on their back or something like that. But the cure rate, I would say, is around probably 60 to 70%, so it's very low. There are not a lot of good studies on this, but again, it's just another tool that we have in case we want to use it. And then lastly, if the basal cell carcinoma has is, is locally big or spreading, there are some oral medications called hedge, hedge hog pathway inhibitors, yeah. <laughs> hedgehog pathway inhibitors. They're medications with an extensive side effect profile, so they're only using the right candidate who's not eligible for surgery, mm -hmm. and the basal cell is big and invasive, or it's not amenable to surgery, or it's metastatic. Those are the indications. We're not gonna go into those because that's not the topic of this video, but I just wanted to mention those so that you guys know there are oral medications because people always ask, well, can I just take a pill and get rid of it? Yeah, but just as a general rule, taking pills is usually more more side effects, uh, right. there are more side effects or more dangerous, I would say, mm -hmm. than topical treatments. Not in all cases, but as general rule of thumb, if I can put it on the skin, I'd rather yeah. not give you a pill. Is that true? Right, yeah, 100%, because the systemic absorption is uh, slim to nothing, you know, unless you're applying it everywhere, so. Yep, yep. Well, thank you so much for joining me today mm -hmm. and talking about non-surgical options for basal cell carcinomas. If you guys have any comments or questions, don't forget to drop them below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.